Before we kick off, I'm going to set up a script to d deploy. We're going to deploy a lot of times, so it's going to get really annoying if we keep having to write a command manually. So, whoops. So we want to uh, touch a file called deploy, and then we want to make it executable. And then we'll see it appear up here. So first put your shebang in so uh, your execution environment knows where to find bash. This is a pretty good best practice to point it to your environment bash. So this is a really useful way to handle script arguments. So let's say for example, what we want to achieve is something along the lines of here, we go deploy uh, version 1.0.0, great. And then we want to go something like that. These are all going to be broken up into different parameter or argument numbers. Dollar one would be this one here, including the little hyphens. This would be dollar two, and this would be dollar three. So to clarify the in, uh, the syntax here, we've got while, and these square brackets are what's known as test. So while test whether the first argument is not empty. At least that's how I think about. It minus n, not empty, do done, so echo. So this is just gonna keep echoing at the first parameter forever. So if we just get rid of that, great. So that's kind of not very useful. So what we wanna do is we want to shift, and so it'll do it a single time, then it will shift all the arguments across. So if you imagine we had $1, $2, after we call shift, it will appear like this. So basically pops the, the number one off the front, and this should only run one time. Perfect. So now that we've got that set up, we can go case $1 in Isaac. We'll get rid of that echo there. And then we can go version. Okay. And then to, to in the a statement here, we use the double semicolon. Echo version defined. Version defined. Beautiful. So now we want to pass a value into this. So if we went version 1.0.0, we can see it's defined, but we've done nothing with the version. We can then write the version to a, a variable. So if we go version equals dollar two and then maybe after here we go echo the version great a very important thing to note is if you use the second variable here you have to shift it again otherwise if you you go back to our previous example with one we've shifted the version that becomes so that's that's version in this case, and then this is the value. So the vec the next thing we actually want to handle is this dollar three. If we don't shift here, the next parameter or argument, sorry, that's going to get handled by the case statement is actually going to be dollar two. So uh, which will be in this case one dot zero dot zero, which is not very useful. I can actually show you show you this for example if I go one dot zero dot zero. Let's get rid of that shift. Oh. You can see it's actually handling the, the argument past a version here rather than skipping over it. So if we shift here, then that won't happen. Perfect. So this is uh, the main point here is if we wanted something else here. So for example, if we wanted to find the project, we go project and then we go uh, beta of math. We want that project to be the next value that's handled, not the version number. Let's chuck in project. And you can see it's printed the project. Let's get rid of that. And let's get rid of that. 
so this is really useful if you want to create a, a bit more of a professional bash statement. There are libraries you, which you can use to, to achieve similar things, but it's, it's good to know a few of these tricks so you can just uh, do it the good old fashioned way. So let's put a little help statement in here. That'll be useful. So we're going to call help, which is a function we're about to define. So help, and this is the syntax that we'll use. Now we just want to echo. And then it's a good practice to write down your different arguments that you can provide. Something along these lines. And then at the end, we want to exit one because we don't want the execution flow to pass help. So let's try a little help statement. And you can see, beautiful, beautiful. Maybe get rid of that space there because it's a bit ugly. Great. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. So, well, we here we might as well put project into a variable. It's a, it's a good idea to print out your your variables so you actually can see what they were set to. And it's a very good practice to check whether your variables have been declared or not. So the way I like to do this, I think it's quite clean, is to go, um, so this minus z means if it's empty. So if it is empty, we want to go error, version required, and exit one. So this is that test thing we mentioned earlier. So um, test whether the version variable is empty. If it is, so and echo error version required and exit. Now you can see if we don't add anything, it should say, well, first we'll print these. Let's actually put that below because that's a bit ugly. And it'll say version required. Okay, so we put in the version. Okay, version defined. And now let's complain about project. Project. In this particular instance, I don't actually want to provide the project. I just want to use whatever it's configured to at the moment. So I'm just going to set this to uh, not exit and maybe warn. Warning project using gcloud default. Something I like to do is define the actual version number. Uh, that way, when you're deploying, you can choose whether you want to overwrite a version or whether you want to roll out a new version. Uh, I've got this small little statement here. So what it's going to do is it's going to grep the version that's been defined, and it's going to check that it's actually in that 1.0.0 notation as pretty standard with semantic versioning. And if it's not, it's going to exit. So let's try that. Deploy. Oh, yeah. Version. Oh, so I've actually asked to add a little V at the front there. Very nice. And then what happens if, if it is true is it replaces the dot with said using said. So said substitute uh, escape the dot here and replace it with the hyphen. Now this is an app engine thing. You need to use hyphens. It doesn't allow dots and versions. So something to pay attention to if you if you want to do a similar thing. So let's define our gcloud statement here. gcloud app deploy. We want it to be quiet because we don't want that confirmation message. And then we want to put in version here. It's good practice to put quotations around your variables. So when they expand, they don't drop uh, new lines and things like that. If we if you had renamed your app YAML file, we would go app YAML equals, and then uh, let's say we called it app.default.yaml. We would do something like that. I'm actually just going to leave this off because we've used the default name. Now, and a really important flag here is the no promote flag. 
this is what will determine in production whether it, it puts it immediately as the live version. So we were, before we were talking about on App Engine, you have the versions and you route traffic between them. Uh, you, you do that using traffic splitting. So if you were going to do that, you wouldn't want to just roll out your new version. You'd want to roll it out with no traffic going to it. And then you would want to divert a small amount of traffic to it. You can see here split traffic. Let's set a, a little flag to deal with that no promote. So how do we go from having a flag like this to changing the command? A good way to do this might be to, let's get rid of that. Rather than invoking the command directly, we actually define the command as a string at first. Gonna get, get rid of that for simplicity. And then what we can do is we can run eval command and it has the same effect as if we had just run that command itself. So this is very useful if you want to do conditional additions to the command. So in this case, we want to have a condition where if promote is equal to true, and we want to put that as a string, Okay, let's not run eval yet. Let's just print that. So you might notice I'm using a lowercase variable here and I'm using uppercase variables in other places. My feeling is that this is used when there it's a constant, so it's only dev, ever declared once, whereas the lowercase variables are used when it's something that might change over time. So let's just quickly run that and have a look at what happened. So you can see it default ran with the no promote flag, which is what we've decided to do. So if we want it to be promoted automatically, then we need to add promote. So it's good to default to something that's safe in this case, which would be to not promote it. And then we go promote. And then you see this flag here, great. So if we run that, we should actually see our application deploy. Um, Let's put the version number to, let's just go 0 .0 0.0.1. Oh, actually need to use the variable here. Okay, so what's happened here is it's not actually found the app.yaml file. That can get quite annoying if you want to execute the script from anywhere but within uh, the root directory. So let's actually fix that. So I'm going to define a variable called dir. So when I run it from within the scripts folder, it just says dir dot. But if I go back and go dot slash scripts deploy, copy that stuff, you can see it's dot slash scripts. Why would you ever want to do this? It's useful if you want to call the script from just about anywhere. Whether I'm in the scripts folder or the root directory, I can provide a relative path, for example, the, to the app.yaml file, and it should know where to find it. From the scripts folder, you saw it fail before because it didn't know where to find it. It wasn't in the scripts folder. And the, the default path it's going to look for is in the execution path. So I want the current directory of the actual script, which is what this is doing over here. It's getting the directory of where the script is located. So it's under scripts. And then I want to navigate backwards up to the root directory. And then I want to use app.yaml. So this should be able to now find the app.yaml file. And there it is.
Now, when we refresh this, we should see, rather than this date-based versioning, we should see our new versioning come in. I'm on the fence whether this is actually a good idea. Sometimes uh, maybe it is better to use this, um, this date-based versioning, but it's quite hard to to kind of remember which versions you want to roll back to and things like that. So you can see it's it's serving all the traffic because we've set it to promote. So let's do an example where we don't set it to promote. Okay, well let's up the patch and then let's not add the promote flag and run it again. Refresh again. And you can see it's not, no longer actually serving traffic. Well, it's not serving traffic to this new version. So if we wanted to migrate traffic, oh, that's going to migrate all of it. Let's go split traffic. So we want 10% of traffic to go to our new version and 90% to go to the old version. Uh, you get a few different split options here. They're pretty self-explanatory. So that's actually a very powerful way to do canary releases in production. Uh, it's, it's great that this is an included feature. It's one of the benefits of using App Engine. I just tried to migrate from the command line using gcloud uh, app migrate, well, versions migrate, and blah, blah, blah. And it doesn't let you because I'm using basic scaling. So automatic scaling is a bit more powerful. Uh, you need to use a different instance type. So B1 actually defines uh, the instance type, which doesn't support automatic scaling. Uh, so here's another configuration. We want the max instances of one still. We want target CPU utilization of 65%, but we still want to scale back to zero when there is no traffic. These values here define essentially tweaking values for scaling up and scaling down. So to quickly show you how you might migrate from the existing service to the new service, you use the gcloud app services set traffic command. The services default, if you look, uh, well, if you clicked on service here, you'd see default. So we want 90% on the existing service, uh, the existing version, and 10% on the new version. There we go. So this is a useful command. We might want to copy that and put it in as a command within our deploy script. So maybe we'll make a flag called canary. So we want to roll out 10% to our new version. Uh, we have to get our old version. So how do we do that? Let's have a look. So we can get the currently the currently deployed and taking traffic versions using gcloud app versions less hide no traffic. So let's execute that. This is not entirely useful because we don't have a version that's not taking traffic, but I'm going to assume that we want the bottom line, which is the, the current serving version. So how we might use this is we want to get the last value. So we'll tail it and get the last single value, in which case is this default version four. And then we need to get the version number from this. So if you are relatively new to Bash, you can use something called AWK. And then we use print and then we use two in this instance. So that's gonna get the second thing broken by white space, essentially. There we go. So we'll grab that. And we wanna chuck it in a variable. So use dollar parentheses. And then let's put in something called old version. Okay, and of course we want to check if canary is true. Okay, so let's try roll out a new version using that canary rollout. If 
fifth version, Canary. So you can see I also uh, required manual input there, which is not very useful. So I've just added this quiet flag. Now, hopefully this is rolled out a new version and diverted the traffic. Okay, that's really good. These are the kind of steps that you need to take if you're gonna make a production application in App Engine. You need to be able to roll out uh, canary releases or gradual releases, and you need to be able to quickly revert back to your old version. So I like to create these little scripts, but obviously you can also just use the console.